When your patient is using anything other than bilateral crutches, they will not use the assistive device to stand or to sit. They will have the assistive device close by so that once they get up, it's available to them, but they will not use it to stand. So put your hands on there and let's stand up. Okay, actually, what are this? This is usually what happens. They pull up on it and it falls oh, forward. Down. Okay, and if it's a four-wheeled walker, what else does it do? It's just going to roll right away from them. So with anything except bilateral crutches, whether they be traditional or lost strands, they do not use the assistive device to stand or to sit. What they're going to do is push up from the surface as best as they can. And however much help they need from me, I'm going to provide. Okay? Then once we get up, they're going to reach for that assistive device. And then we're going to proceed with our gait pattern and our weight bearing status. Okay? So coming back to sit down, they're going to take tiny steps. Actually, let's start over there so they can just see this. Okay. And again, I'm on her valve side, and while we're performing gait, I'm probably going to try to stay a little in front of her. I'm not going to be back here. I need to be here because I need to see what's going on here. So there are pictures in your textbook that if I had my druthers, <laughs> I would put big X's through them because they are showing him guarding her from behind as she is ambulating forward. And that is a no-no. Now, yes, he has his hand up here, but if she really starts to fall forward, oh my God, you know, there's no way. There's no way. But if I'm here and she starts to fall forward, now I can pull back and I can use my body and push. I can't do that if I'm behind her. So those pictures where he's behind her, especially <coughs> the one where she's going downstairs, he's behind her. I wish I could just burn them. those out of all your textbooks, so do that. Mm -hmm. Because that is not what I'm teaching you, and that is not what you should be doing in the clinic. You'll fail. All right, it's that serious. Okay. All right, so... This patient is using a standard walker, so she has upper body strength. She has to be able to take the walker, advance the walker, and then move with it. This is one where you're not gonna move simultaneously. You're gonna move the walker and then come to it. Now, as we start to approach the surface, I'm gonna ask her to kind of walk alongside, and I'm gonna scoot in here with her. When the patient is in a position to find the surface to sit down, they need to take tiny steps backwards until the back of their legs feel the <coughs> surface behind them. You feel that back there? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Do you remember what we have to do with our left leg before we sit down? Straighten it out. Straighten it out a little bit. Now we're going to totally let go of the walker and we're gonna reach down for the surface. Good job, okay? So they should not sit down until they feel the surface behind them. And they should let go of this because if they hold on to it while they're descending, it's going to fall onto them. They will lose their balance, especially initially. 